today is a panel of parents and their adult children who are going to share their thoughts and experiences about transition. Parents, and by extension, their children are always among my favorite presenters because they have walked the walk. I know they will be honest and will help share their experiences which benefits all of us. We're going to begin with two families who are preparing for transition this summer. And we're going to follow that up with two families who have already been on the other side of transition and can speak about where they are today and what they've learned along the way. As noted before, their full biographies are included in your event folder, so please check those out, although I think they're going to be covering a lot of it in their presentations. So please help me welcome Christina and Marilyn Tassada, Will and Garb Tobias, Alex and Terry Judithic, and Tyler and Carol Nussbaum. Hello, everybody. Hello. I am from Six Sada. I am 21 old. I live in other high with my mom and my dad and my boyfriend. When he is not at college, I am. I am in a different 214. The literary program called Life. I will exit the program in June and make my diploma and when start a whole new culture and life. I have up and down. Oh, that's the drum. And I have Every a loss, so I wear it. Mm. My mom, Marilyn. Mm. Hello, everyone. I'm Marilyn. Mm. I'm here to share some things mm. about Christina that may be of interest mm. to you. Mm. 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 When Christina is not in school, mm. she loves to act. Mm. She has been acting for nine years. Mm -hmm. And she has been acting with a theater group called United Parents Support for Down Syndrome with their theater group. Mm -hmm. It's a community-based group mm -hmm. that acts side by side with typical peers in our community. Mm -hmm. She was just in The Lion King and she played Mufasa. Mm -hmm. And before that, she was Penny Pingleton in Hairspray as well as many other smaller roles. Mm -hmm. Christina enjoys taking classes to improve her acting skills. Mm. Currently, she is taking a Romeo and Juliet class mm. and will be performing it in June. Mm. She also participates mm. in a twice monthly book club mm. called the Next Chapter Book Club. Mm. It's a community based book club for adults with Down syndrome, mm. autism, cerebral palsy, and other intellectual and developmental disabilities. Mm. Christina also loves to work out at Export, which mm. is our local health club. She dances mm. and has been taking a healthy mm. eating class to try to improve her overall mm. health. Mm. 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 I am so happy to say that I also had a boyfriend. Mm. I have been mm. with Jacob for ten, almost 10 years. Mm. We plan on getting married and living in our own apartment. Mm. And Love for sure. Mm. I have been getting a job mm. with my school for the past three years. Mm. I have trained at teaching at Walgreens mm. Park Garden Day mm. uh, at Chia Walgreens at mm. Park Garden Day Care. Mm. And I trained at those places I learn a lot about myself. Mm. I learn that I'm good and amazing mm. and can learn many new things. And I also find out mm. that I really do not like mm. working with kids. Mm. <laughs> of course. <laughs> They are really too loud for me, <laughs> but I do 
love, working with the clothes, and organizing all types of little things. In looking ahead to Christina's future, we've been trying to look at opportunities that will help Christina be who she is and that she can enjoy doing things. She absolutely loves makeup, so we looked into doing things with it. I'm happy to say that Christina is working side by side with me as a Mary Kay cosmetics rep. She loves giving advice on makeup and helping people to look their best, so this was naturally a good fit for us to try our hand at. She's working very hard every day to learn about the business and hopes to get lots of new customers who want to look and feel their best. We started doing this now as Christina will be done with school in June, so we thought it would be good to have at least a plan in motion so we could start in the right direction. When I finished school in June, I planned getting a private part-time job. I would like to work three days a week. I am working with customers connect to the community right now to get a job. And I am really excited when the new part of my life, I also, I also my care, my plan on getting a more clear job in my community may be as a full pantry, my church or the baby can I learn new skills and to meet new people. I will continue at work out and at court to my book club and to get a play. And I will take classes in and Harper at the grade two fourteen so I can always be learning. Christina is now 21 and is showing signs of independence more and more every day. She has some pretty nice dreams, and my job as her parent is to try to help her achieve those dreams. She's been with her boyfriend, Jacob, for over 10 years. They constantly talk about how they'd like to get married in some form or fashion and to live together. They would like to live in an apartment. In order to see that if this is even an option in the future, they'll probably start off by living at our house, and they will learn to just get along. What's it gonna take day to day? When they get up in the morning, till they go to sleep at night. Everything involved in it. Cooking, cleaning, talking, shopping, paying bills. Everything in a normal day. We're gonna see how that goes, and if that's even a possibility on our radar. All we know is that we're gonna keep trying, and if this is something that can happen, it will happen. Uh, most likely, we are going to have to hire someone to help us along the way, and we're going to see how that brings us along as we explore all this. Um, also, we're figuring things out in terms of transportation for them. Um, right now, we live in Arlington Heights, so we are in Wheeling Township, and we have signed up for the door-to-door -door transportation service. Uh, we also use Uber, and we are going to be getting trained with the RTA, I believe it's called the RTA Transit Program, to learn how to use buses and trains and just how to use the systems. I like my mouth said, my dream is to marry Jacob, get a part-time job, and live in our own apartment. I just want to be happy and have a a life full of activities mm. and people that I love. Thank you for listening mm. to me. Thank you. Mm. William wants the ability to talk. 
walk at the age of seven from seizures, and he's had a bad seizure day, so that's why shoes are off, and he's in recline, and he's complaining to me right now. Um, as you can tell, he's giving stink eye, and he's glad to be here, but I'm bothering him. He's letting me know. So, the good news is we have his best friend, Kevin Ehrenberg, here. Also, his Co, uh, co founder of a non uh, of a business called Painted, Commun Painted Products, sorry. Um, and so Kevin is here to pass out business cards if anyone's interested in their business afterwards. And then on my other side, and you see there's like a swarm of bees attracted to this honey guy over here, um, is, is all Will's personal support workers and family and friends who uh, like to be around Will because. We call him willpower. He's a magnet for all good people and all good things. We just kind of follow his lead. So, Big Mike over here has been with us for over 10, uh, 11 years. He's Will's developmental therapist. And we always say when he threatens to move that we're following him wherever he goes. So, that's a little bit about the background, about Team Tobias. And, and Mr. Will. And Big Mike is going to be Will's voice because, of course, we're having technical difficulties with our iPad. Mm. <clears throat> um, hi, I'm Will Tobias. I'm a friendly, happy young man who likes to be around people and to be helpful. <laughs> Things to know about me. I am 21 years old. I live in Hoffman Estates. And I live with my mom, my dad, my older brother John, and our dog Bell. I go to minor school. I walk in his wheelchair. I talk using my iPad and I, my expressive and engaging ways. Mm. I am ready to finish school and begin the next chapter of my life. Mm. Mm. Oh man, I need more hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of <laughs> Thanks, Christina. Um, so, a long, long time ago when Will was little, our most beloved OT, who was fantastic with Will, really got frustrated and she said one day, but he can't even, he can't even do this, he can't even do that. And that was a watershed moment for me. I realized at that time that I was going to have to really be the strong one and look at what Will could do and not worry about what he couldn't do. And it helped me to be stronger and it helped me to follow Will's lead and not follow all the possibly sad stories that could have happened. So despite all of those challenges, daily seizures, autism, lost the ability to talk at age seven, declining motor and cognitive ability over the years, multiple medications, multiple hospitalizations, anywhere from five weeks to three months. Um, the longest we've gone is two years without being in the hospital, otherwise we're regularly there. All kinds of therapies. And after attending um, a facilitated communication social at the age of 12, Will was so excited. When we got home, I said, tell me what's making you so happy. It took him about a half an hour, but he typed, happy not to be invisible. It was the first time he was fully included in a nonverbal social interaction where us parents had to take the background and we let them talk through typing. That was another watershed moment for me. Follow his lead, help him find his voice even if it was silent. Mm. Mm. Marcy Frawley, my favorite. Um, so you are as good as you go, no fix you are good to go as you are, no fixing necessary. So these are lessons. I am not original, I'm a great copycat. I have learned and watched all of you and many other parents and professionals who care about people with disabilities, and I've listened, and I've just tried to learn on the go, so I commend you all for being here willing to listen to all of these professionals and all these stories. Discover your child's skills, interests, talents, and motivations, just as you do in customized employment, but in general for their whole life. What is everything about them that they like to do, they're willing to do, they're willing to tolerate, what brings them joy, what challenges them in a happy, healthy way. Build on them, no matter how small, no matter how trivial. Will's strongest talent is that he can pick up in place. That's it, but it's enough. It's enough. Find the people and the places in the community that are positive and where you can repeat your visits, your interactions. 
Don't waste time on places and people who aren't positive. It's just a waste of time. <clears throat> I know, I know, we're getting to your stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. Oh, I think I missed something. Nope. Okay. Am I there? You're there. No. Okay. All right. Circles of support. So, you know, this is about finding those people, build a rich life, find those people who can help you when you're tired. Um, and when you're tired, you don't have to do the therapy. Just have fun. Just enjoy your child and find meaning and purpose. Um, we, despite all of our challenges, just chose to take the high road. I'm not saying it hasn't been hard. It's been hard, but it's been happy hard work. Right? <laughs> Even when I'm driving you crazy. Okay, so again, I'm not original, but I was so challenged by trying to figure out, in my fear about transition, what a meaningful life could be. I looked at, well, what do I expect of myself? What do I expect of my family, my other child? What is a normal life? And I happened to see Dr. Luke Sai speak years ago, and he looked at, what is your life plan? What is a normal life filled with? And it's filled with those eight things. Employment, self-care, shelter, sports, fitness, service, social, some kind of faith, if you like, and self-enrichment, so hobbies. So that helps keep my sanity when I would be lost. You know, when you lay your head on the pillow at night and you're like, oh my gosh, what did I get done? What do I need to do? I don't even know. Mm -hmm. I would resort back to that pie chart mm -hmm. and figure out what's the one thing that we're doing well and what can I add on to. And then I would check with Will and he'd let me know. <clears throat> right? So the other thing I've learned is that preparing our children for adulthood is like launching a cruise ship. Slow and steady wins the race. It's not a rocket ship or a spaceship. So build as independent of people as possible. Do chores, do more chores, teach more chores, do chores, do more chores, teach more chores. Because that is, those are the building blocks to being responsible, doing what you need to do, whether you feel like it or not, because those things just have to get done. And then put the fun around it. It's like a present. Get that stuff done and put a pretty bow on it. Build interests, build hobbies, build friendships. You know, we just try to fit those in. We try to make it happen. Get out in the community doing what they like, then do more of it. Invite friends, expand on it. Volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. Uh, it's work. Work leads to work. You don't learn to work by not working. So even unpaid work is work. And we have found that that's, that's helped us tremendously. Okay, well, I know your time to be talking. Um, and then this is a great chart. It's in the back of the, our handout for you by Lori Drew and Cindy Perez about how to map out the transition plan. What should the week at a glance look like? What should a day at a glance look like to help you be sane as you start to figure this out so it's not overwhelming? I have found that tremendously helpful. Okay, here you go, friends. Will has lots of friends. Some are paid because they're personal support workers. Some are family. Some are nurses, mm -hmm. some are doctors, mm -hmm. neighbors. We have lots of friends, but our relationships are fantastic. Um, he was the ring bearer last year in a dear friend's wedding, who was Will's, um, worked for him with uh, NWSRA at camp one year. I know you want to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, look for those friendships. Look for people where your friendships don't, it doesn't matter what you can't do. What matters is what you can do, where you feel connected, where you're not worried about, like, no shoes on and all the problems. We had this afternoon, you have no idea, I'm sweating like bullets because of the last 30 minutes have been a little busy and will seize your life. Um, and then the next one is find those those bridge builders. That's that social capital. Find those people who naturally are, can connect you with someone else, who introduce you to say, hey, come along, let's do this, let's do that, or would we like to, or which so-and-so. Um, when, when it was hard for us, it was those, those were the people who helped us find our way. And build social capital, so that's more of that. Look at those people who you can be around. It's not who knows you, it's who you know. Who are the bridge builders? Who are the gatekeepers? So when you're out in the community, Ralph, uh, Will's dad, Ralph, right over there, dad, would, um, they'd go up every Sunday morning to the Starbucks near our house, and every Sunday morning, this barista who informed Will he must call her Auntie Pam, that was when he could talk, um, would have his soy milk warmed to 110 degrees, 
and Ralph's coffee ready and she would only charge them a dollar. I mean, that's social capital. It wasn't, we didn't know what we were doing. They just went for coffee. <laughs> just do it, just be nice, enjoy the people around you. Bees are drawn to honey. Uh, address conflicts with respect. It's not about the, it's about the problem, it's not about the person. You know, sometimes we're so frustrated as parents that we're ready to, as I would say, lunch the table. Um, <laughs> uh, but don't go there. Just take that deep breath, think those yoga breaths, and think it's about, you know, how do we address the problem? Because you really want, at the end of the day, for people to want to work with you because they like your kid and you're not so hard to deal with. Um, there's always a solution. Be the example. That was another piece I learned from Barbara Doyle years ago, is that, it's almost your turn, Will, um, is that when you're out in the community, model how you want your child to be treated and to be interacted with. If you're not up for it, don't go out. <laughs> um, so on those bad days, we'd be stuck at home and I was too crabby. But you know, Will, you know how much I love you, but sometimes I'm really tired and I don't have the stamina. So, and the other, um, oh shoot, it'll come to me. And then, okay, your turn, Will. Hold on, coming. Mm. 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 Can you read it? Oh, oh, it's also a slurpy mm. connection. What helps me succeed? Mm. When I have a person to support me, knowing the expectations, mm. work that is predictable and repetitive, mm. being able to take walking, mm. standing breaks, I am mean, I'm doing well. Mm. Working with other people, mm. uh, being part of a supportive and friendly team, mm. music to help me self-regulate. Mm. Awesome. Where is my mm. wheelchair? Mm. Oh, where my wheelchair fits. Mm. Uh, where my wheelchair fits. fits mm. uh, mm. Where my helmet Working at my own pace and adjusting when I don't feel well. Mm. Where my humming is accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Mm. Will loves to volunteer, so we is volunteering with his friend Catherine at Oktoberfest last year through CTC. We hosted a volunteer opportunity, and they went and washed tables and picked up um, garbage um, during Oktoberfest in Palatine. Yeah. <laughs> And you cannot tell in that picture, but Will is just about going crazy because Catherine put her arm around him and he's like, oh my gosh, hot babe on my right. Um, he also volunteers for CTC at the Palatine Chamber. That's also... Him. And then in the upper right hand corner, he volunteers for NSSCO where he goes to school for their phone. Yeah, I know you like that. So he picks, does inventory on their gift greeting cards. Um, and then we have to write a, they go, uh, we have to do a, a report on a spreadsheet and he has to send an email. Let me tell you, we're, we're like one, one finger at a time and it takes us a long time, but you know what? We do it. We're happy and he's learning a lot from it and so am I. And then in the bottom middle is uh, volunteering at Willow Creek, um, their care center. Again, what can Will do? Pick up in place, mm. point, touch a key. Mm. We just work with it. Mm. Mm. Oh, the, the other one that I learned from Barbara Doyle is never ask someone else to do what you are not willing to do yourself for your child. Mm. So be the example of all that is possible. Mm. If you're credible, mm. they'll believe you and they'll want to work with you and they'll want to meet you halfway. Mm. So that's all the things Will does for service. Did we start this way? No, baby steps. We, well, let me see, here we go. It started with Project Hope. I was having coffee with a girlfriend at Einstein's, no, at, um, at Starbucks, and she was lamenting that there was nobody to pick up the end of the day bagels where she volunteered and put them in freezer bags and put them in their food pantry. And Will and I were looking for a way not to be victims of his disability. We were looking for a way to be helpful and not be the, the identified patient. So we tried it, loved it, did it for three years, one day a week, and we got asked to, um, they offered him a paid position. I said, you have to understand, he needs full support when we do this. And they said, yes, but we wouldn't have those bagels if it weren't for Will Tobias because he's doing that volunteer job. Mm -hmm. He's feeding over 100 people a week and he deserves mm -hmm. to be paid. 
and now the job has been grown from one afternoon a week to three afternoons a week, and we now deliver to three different food pantries. It's a pretty amazing experience. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna jump right to the most important thing. NSSEO had a craft fair, they invited students to give entrepreneurship a try. Will loves happy socks and candy, so we made little bags. Um, he loved it, we found out Will not into product development, but he's totally into product sales. <laughs> oh, and he also likes to take money. Um, so from, from that invitation, an old swing set that we were trying to figure out what to do with this, we took it down, and um, two people who loved to paint, a business was born. They, our dear friend, Kevin Ehrenberg and Will, started painting the old wood from the swing set and they let me know that they had no intention of painting what I had planned, which was yard dice. I thought that was so cool. But they were like, no way. It needs to be Halloween blockheads. I was like, what? So uh, Lynn and Marty Ehrenberg, Kevin's parents are here today. We just put our heads together in our garage, rolled up our sleeves, and these two young men go online, decide what they want the characters to look like. They design them. We have to make it happen. They paint what they can, and we do the rest. But they always has to meet their approval. And Kevin, wouldn't you say you're pretty, you have pretty high standards? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to leave it with this: that Kevin is holding our painted products, uh, their their business cards for he and Will. And I just want to say, nobody in the world would have thought we could do anything like this. But from just believing and staying positive and following what are the elements of a good quality life, employment, service, social, and all those other pieces, it all came together. And we have a ways to go, but we're just going to keep learning. And if you're interested in painted products, talk to these two guys, the co-founders. Thank you very much. Hello. I'm Alex Dusek. I talk loud, so I don't think I need a mic. Everybody can hear me okay, right? All right, perfect. Um, so uh, I'm on the autism spectrum, um, uh, previously diagnosed with what's called Asperger's syndrome, which was obviously taken out of the DSM, right? Yeah, DSM, and now it's just a, whatever they're doing. So, um, <laughs> uh, and I'm almost 27 years old. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to share my journey about. Uh, how my transition went looking for um, employment and stuff uh, post high school. Um, while I excelled academically, I did struggle somewhat socially and with skills um, the, for employment. And so uh, we're just going to do a quick rundown of uh, that. Um, so I uh, graduated from Schomburg High School in 2008. Um, I only had. Uh, done one summer internship through the school district um, at, between my junior and senior year over the summer and it didn't really reflect a real job environment like I it was I think kind of like piloting like they weren't used to uh, people with my level of functioning so uh, I decided that extra years weren't really going to help uh, staying in the school because they weren't really couldn't meet my needs um, as far as yeah so um I went to Harper and I got a graphic arts technology associate's degree as well as some um, related certificates in web design and photography and um, it was a good experience um, and uh, the access and disability office was very good and helpful um, and I had I did sign documents so my mom could uh, communicate with things because sometimes I was having trouble with uh, advocating for myself so um, just to make sure that went all good so um but I have worked on those skills and I'm better at advocating for myself now. Um, uh, also in 2008, uh, we uh, founded a support group called Passage, which is planning Asperger's syndrome success and generating experiences. And um, my mom will talk a little bit more about that. At that time, um, Alex was having a lot of time socially and interacting. He had tried a few things employment-wise and they weren't working out so well. Um, and he said, Mom, you know, people like me, we need more help. Even though we may be able to get through the high school program, we're not excelling in the social environment. 
difficulty with friends, um, employment, that type of thing. So we founded Passage along with Linda Heck, for those of you who know Linda, um, and we founded it and were supported by parents and other professionals. We had a parent and uh, student or young adult portion of it. It's still going on today. Right now we're hosted by Clearbrook and there's a couple of other groups that were born out of that as well. The ASD Life Transitions um, out of Amita and also we met with NextGen uh, at the Schomburg Township District Library and they've started a program there. So what we uh, facilitated there were two sections, a parent and a young adult section. We had everybody coming in, speakers from everything for social, recreation, employment, uh, people how to write resumes, you know, private programs, uh, DRS, all kinds of speakers, driving, anything you could imagine that might be, you know, a challenge. And through this group, friendships were made. Um, the families still meet today. We've even, some of us, gone on some small vacations together. So that's been really um, helpful. The other thing is parents and professionals that were a part of that group would share a lot of resources that they would get. And through that group, young adults actually, some of them got jobs, they were, got summer internship programs, even employment. Um, some of them attended special college programs, but none of us would have known about that pro those programs if we all didn't share the resources we had together. Um, and the other thing that we did uh, is meet with like the Schomburg Township District Library, a bunch of, a bunch of us met, including Harper College and Township District 211 to get programming at the library done. We recently met with Laugh Out Loud in Schaber to get a, um, a improv class that's gonna be going, starting up soon. Um, we also met with uh, like Tammy Duxworth office, and Michelle Musman's office, just to let them know what the needs of the community are. One thing I can share with you that we never really followed up with, but it might be beneficial, that Schomburg and Hanover Township um, Tammy Duckworth's office suggested that we work through the township offices. They're the two largest townships in the nation and said that sometimes benefits uh, and programs can be gotten through the townships, actually. We haven't pursued that. Let's so turn it back over to Alex. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to talk about some of the different um, types of work programs and stuff that I did. Um, so I was still at Harper uh, working on my associate's degree. I uh, got an internship through the Chicago's Mayor's Office for Individuals with Disabilities at McDonald's Corporate. Um, and uh, it didn't work, it was okay, but it wasn't the best because my, uh, the person, the coordinator for that program didn't disclose what my disability was prior to me going there. So the person I was directly reporting to, I came in the first day and they didn't, they just knew they were getting a person with a disability, not anything about what type of disability it was or anything. So, and I don't think the person was super eager to have any intern, much less one with a disability to begin with. So that kind of led to um, a little bit of issue. So, uh, and DRS could not provide any support or anything because it was only a, a sum, uh, 11 week summer program. So um, I, I was able to do the program. I worked with one of the like HR persons at McDonald's and stuff and um, it uh, worked okay. And they just, they were able to figure out how to have me to have me do stuff and some days they didn't have me like come in like if uh, the direct person wasn't going to be there and stuff um, but it was okay but yeah um, I've also worked at uh, I did two other jobs in the community uh, one with the assistance of DRS and one without um, and there were some issues with uh, both of those um, just based on uh, not maybe being the, the best fit and not having the support and training needed to be successful at them um, what else did I do? Mm. Uh, so some of the things that did work, mm. I did uh, youth mm. programming through Illinois WorkNet, mm. and that was pretty good. It was I got a I was able to get a short six week internship at Harper in their print like mm. area with uh, where they do the teaching, which was good because I already knew the mm. staff I was working with as I was mm. had graduated through that program mm. um, and stuff. So that was good. Um, but even with that, we realized I still needed some more uh, job and soft skills trainings that were more targeted and focused. Um, so we, um, what do we do? We, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, we did in the spring of 2012, we went to a private program, uh, Turning Point Autism Foundation, where they uh, had, um, were working with uh, Walgreens and Office Max. Uh, to work on the specific skills and teaching like what those jobs entailed and stuff. So in August of 2012, I was uh, hired at Office Max, um, which was good. Um, 
that the mm -hmm. upper management of Office Max, mm -hmm. like the corporate, uh, was really mm -hmm. supportive of the program. So they even like mm -hmm. called out to like the store mm -hmm. manager of the store that I had applied to to like make sure I got the job, which was nice. Because yeah. um, I don't know if I would have gotten it otherwise. Um, so uh, I did, I worked on slowly progressing my skills there. Um, so I was able, I can do like, uh, now mm -hmm. it's like five years mm -hmm. out almost. Uh, I can do, do stocking, assist mm -hmm. customers, cashiering. Mm -hmm. uh, I help in the print area. Um, so all mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, I even did stuff that I wasn't mm -hmm. comfortable first at doing, like mm -hmm. answering the phone. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm okay with doing it and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can try to mm -hmm. help people and sell things mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's mm -hmm. what I did. Uh, we did bring in a private job coach at certain times mm -hmm. because part of the problem with things like retail mm -hmm. is there can be turnover mm -hmm. fairly quickly um, with mm -hmm. both associates and also mm -hmm. management. And so the problem is when you have, you might have a manager that gets you, but then, then you have one that comes in and they don't, or they're not supportive, or they don't want a person with a disability. And so uh, that does sometimes lead to some tension and problems. Um, but yeah, but I have, I worked through it and I'm pretty good at now with where I am with it and independent and uh, I can, I know how to self advocate, self -advocate better for myself. Um, I also in uh, 2013, I started working at a spear tech which is a uh, software mm -hmm. testing company uh, in Highland Park mm -hmm. that only hires, uh, mm -hmm. or primarily hires people on the autism mm -hmm. spectrum. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I did, I did software testing for a short time there. Uh, it wasn't the best fit though, because um, mm -hmm. I get um, mm -hmm. kind of antsy sitting at a computer for long periods of time. And so um, mm -hmm. I, I did uh, stop there and focus on Office Max, mm -hmm. but then last year mm -hmm. around a year ago because I, I was still in mm -hmm. contact with them somewhat and they do some social programming and stuff mm -hmm. i was able to get hired as uh, they had opened up a bigger social programming for both their employees and also mm -hmm. members of the community so i was able to get a job there and i'm uh, mm -hmm. assisting with their mm -hmm. social programming uh, mm -hmm. now so i do that and that's paid work mm -hmm. um and then also they've also had me now start coming in and they need more help around the office with other office mm. do, uh, tasks and stuff. So I also do that mm. and help them with other needs mm. sometimes during the week. Mm. So yeah, and of, of course, because it's specifically made for people with disabilities, mm. it's a supportive environment. They have mm. a job coach and a counselor and stuff mm. on site if people have issues and stuff, which is mm. nice. So I wanna just go over a couple of things that Alex said. Mm. When he was at McDonald's, we actually had to get a mm. private job coach in or else he mm. wouldn't have made it through um, throughout this time when he's needed additional support, we've been lucky that Office Max 2 would allow a private job coach. One of the things that sometimes happen, he mentioned when management changes, um, the manager he had at the store was leaving and she called me and she said, I think there's gonna be a problem. The person who's coming in does not wanna work with people with disabilities. And I thought, oh boy, what are we gonna do? And she said they normally don't transfer employees, um, but what we will do is talk to the upper management and see what we could do. So he actually had to go to a store that was further away. And then eventually that manager got fired um, and they brought him back to the original store. But it is really challenging when there's a change in management. We were just really lucky that Office Max, you know, the manager that was there took her took him with her to the other store. Mm -hmm. Of you course, know? there were still a little bit of issues at the mm -hmm. other store because then you're with different mm -hmm. other, like the under managements, like the assistant mm -hmm. managers and stuff, and so there's some issues there too, with, so that's a problem. But. Other people had to be trained. When he went to the mm -hmm. office mix where he's at now, they actually brought in people to, mm -hmm. and they were really committed with this program to train and explain you know, limitations or accommodations. Mm -hmm. Uh, even one of the workers that he was with when he started answering the phone, it was a peer about his age who said, are you gonna answer it? You know, and so that helped, you know, just getting those natural supports. Um, so uh, what we've learned is that, uh, you know, probably the mistakes we made, early job experience would have been better. Alex focused the first three years at getting the associates at that time. Um, you couldn't, he couldn't stay on my husband's insurance if he wasn't a full-time student and he couldn't handle being a full-time student and taking you know, some work on. So that was, that was an issue and so it kind of delayed things. It's a journey and things that come naturally sometimes to others. Um, they, have to, you know, they have to learn and it has to be targeted learning. Um, I would say you wanna find a job that utilizes your strengths mm. and something that makes mm. you feel fulfilled, something that speaks mm. uh, to what you might have a passion to. Um, sometimes you need targeted training to improve the skills. Um, having doors did not work for us. The private job coach did help quite a bit. 
they understood the issue better and was were able to work with him one on one. Um, Alex initially needed a lot of help with self advocacy and asking for accommodations. He's really learned that along the way. Um, which is good. And a lot of times we're asked about disclosure. You know, when you go to a job, should you disclose? And we were told by doors, no, don't disclose, don't say anything, just get in. You know, we'll only come in if it's needed. Um, what we've learned is, and somebody said, you know what, we feel tricked. You didn't tell us. We hired you, and then you didn't tell us you were going to need accommodations. So for us, the answer has been, and I'm not saying it's a hard question, but for us, the answer is you should disclose. It works better, and then this way, if they're willing and wanting to put that time and effort into it, it's great. But at least you're not fooling them. You don't get in and two weeks later say, oh, I really need this kind of help. I, I also took on, uh, I have the mentality that, you know, if the person finds out I have a disability and then all automatically doesn't want me to work there, like, why do I want to work with that person anyway? Like, they're not accepting, so. So, yeah. So don't, don't go where you're not wanted because it's just going to lead to conflicts and it's not worth it. You can find somebody who's more accepting and a better person. Um, the other thing is regular scheduling. When people work in uh, retail, the schedule is all over the place. So if you can try at the beginning to work something out with regular scheduling, that's really important. Um, you know, reaching out, having social programming, support groups, reaching out to your community, you're surprised how many people will like, like we just called Laugh Out Loud and said, hey, they want an improv class. And the woman's like, great, I have a nephew who has autism. And yeah, I'd love to, you know, work something out with you guys. And so a lot of times there's things out there, the library, there are really good people out there who want to embrace diversity and have people, you know, a part of their team. So just go out you there and, and, you know, just ask. Um, and I think it's important to have a balanced life. The most uh, challenging thing for us has been transportation. Both of these jobs, there's really not a way to get there by public transit. I'm lucky I'm a nurse, so I'm able to do resource work, you know, make my own schedule, but it's hard because we live in Schomburg and the one job is in Highland Park. The other one's close by in um, Hoffman, but it's, it's a challenge, you know, so transportation is a, a thing we're still working on. Another part of the journey. All right. So just in conclusion, um, you have to think that everything's a journey and you know sometimes it'll be smooth and sometimes it'll be bumpy, but you have to just keep working and trying hard and hopefully things will work out. You have to have a can-do attitude. <laughs>
Tyler was diagnosed with Asperger's after a traumatic brain injury mm -hmm. at age 15. Mm -hmm. Tyler is kind. Mm -hmm. He's always the first mm -hmm. to offer a helping hand. Mm -hmm. He's funny, he's wise, mm -hmm. he's dependable. Mm -hmm. He's hardworking, and if I do say so myself, he's rather good looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Tyler loves his church and he mm -hmm. loves to bowl. As a matter of fact, he just came from bowling and the first thing he said to me is, I got a 167. <laughs> I believe that we're all faced with challenges. We can become a victim of our circumstances, or we can use our circumstances to overcome our challenges and become victorious. After Tyler's brain injury, I became angry, a victim. My passion is working with people to help them discover who they were created to be, to discover their purpose, their strength. And I became angry with God because I did not want to accept this change in Tyler. And then one, guy, one day, God impressed upon my heart that this change in Tyler allowed Tyler to be just who he was created to be. Mm -hmm. By choosing victory, Tyler has accomplished so much. Mm -hmm. Best of all, Tyler likes mm -hmm. who he is and how he was mm -hmm. created. Mm -hmm. Tyler takes mm -hmm. care of his personal hygiene with minimal assistance. Mm -hmm. He does his own laundry. Mm -hmm. And because he doesn't really care for my mm -hmm. meal plan, <laughs> he is responsible for his own meal planning and much of its preparation. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of cereal for dinner. <laughs> He has regular chores, and for the most part, he does them with little or no reminder. In turn, Tyler would be so excited to actually have something that he earned to put into the offering. Saturday morning after Saturday morning, and year after year, Dale and Tyler would faithfully show up and work with the team. Tyler learned how to vacuum between rows of theater-style seats while managing cords. It's harder than it sounds. <laughs> He learned how to clean seat backs and he developed an eagle eye to finding hidden things under armrests, seats, and in the nooks and crannies. I think he was constantly looking for money. <laughs> Once Tyler started high school, he began volunteering on his own after school. He did continue on Saturdays volunteering with his dad. We continue to support mm. Tyler's involvement with work and volunteer responsibilities. Mm. We work on Tyler serving joyfully, doing mm. tasks that challenge him mm. and remind him to ask for direction mm. and assistance before he became mm. anxious or frustrated. Mm. Many times, Dale will work alongside Tyler to set the bar for doing his best, mm. to cheerlead, to encourage, mm. and to praise him. Mm. We realized for Tyler to be successful, we needed a new strategy, mm. a strategy that no longer included going to college, driving a car, mm. or raising his own family. Mm. A strategy not only to master mm. skills, but to point Tyler mm. to independence that we had hoped for him. Mm. When Tyler aged out, we moved into a house and created an apartment for him in our home. We considered other options, but at that time our choices were limited and so were our resources. We enrolled Tyler in a day program um, so that he could learn independent living skills. Transportation was challenging and the tuition was not sustainable. It was at that time that a friend of ours started a pilot program and invited Tyler to attend. This was a self-supporting program that de was developed to create positive um, experiences for each of the participants. Retired social workers, retired teachers, and um, parents volunteered their time, experience, and talents to support the program. Each day they would um, have community time mm. the part where the participants mm. would practice their social skills. Mm. They had time for crafts, mm. they had prayer time. They served mm. the staff in the building mm. with meaningful acts of service. Mm. They had a variety of tasks mm. such as in the copy room, mm. janitorial maintenance, mm. shredding of documents, mm. even working in the kitchen, mm. peeling carrots, wrapping potatoes, stacking dishes, Besides learning marketable skills, mm. they were learning work, mm. teamwork, and mm. responsibility. Mm. I learned a lot from mm. this program. I learned that 
I was to expect much because as high as I raised the bar was as high as the um, Tyler would reach. If a person is giving meaningful work, responsibility, and respect, the level of achievement rises. This, was the, um, this is what we needed to include in our new strategy. Meaningful work, responsibility, and respect. Tyler continues to volunteer. He serves in the care center of our church, serving the guests, helping with their carts, praying with clients when they are in need, he uses his strengths mm. to serve others. Mm. Tyler also has a part-time janitorial mm. job where he uses his skills, um, and these were skills that he learned a very long time ago in the auditorium working with his dad. We still face mm. most multiple challenges mm. each day, whether at work or when serving as a volunteer. Mm. When Tyler is stressed, mm. when he's anxious, when he's frustrated, mm. Mm. Tyler's a rule mm. follower and has a difficult time drawing the lines between what he can mm. and cannot control. Mm. I think many of us can relate mm. to that. Um, mm. But with Tyler, he can go from zero to meltdown in the blink of an eye. You won't even know what happened. Mm. I'm not sure mm. what control he really has over these outbursts, mm. but I do know he mm. walks away from each confrontation mm. feeling embarrassed, mm. defeated, mm. discouraged. So we've been working with Tyler on self-awareness and on how to recognize these feelings. Mm. We've created three by five cards. Mm. Tyler keeps them with him when he works or when he volunteers. Mm. These cards, mm. cards outline mm. what we expect from Tyler mm. and remind him of the consequences mm. of poor choices. Mm. Tyler carries the cards with him while he works mm. and when he mm. volunteers. Mm. Do you wanna read your cards? Mm. The car in front, listen to mm. the supervisors and mm. do the task requested cheerfully. Mm. When you feel mm. anxious, walk away, breathe, mm. breathe mm. deeply, go mm. to a quiet place mm. and calm down. When mm. you feel mm. angry, frustrated, or confused, mm. go mm. to the supervisor before mm. acting out. Mm. No mm. threats, quitting, or physical mm. contact with others to the mm. back of the car. If mm. you do not follow the supervisor's mm. instructions, your mom will be mm. called and you will be picked up immediately. Mm. If mm. the behavior continues and you do mm. not respect the mm. supervisor or other team members, mm. you will be removed from the schedule. Each of the cards mm. has a list of expectations on one side and the flip mm. side has the reminder of the, uh, the consequences mm. for not following the front side of the card. There is no shame, only forgiveness. Mm. But the bottom line truth is the possibility of losing the privilege of serving with the team. I know these cards are useful for Tyler because the first thing he says to me when he gets in the car after his shift is, I didn't have to take the cards out of my pocket today. Um, We've registered Tyler with Clearbrook for future housing. Mm. He was listed 14 years ago mm. as a not urgent need. Mm. When the need becomes urgent, he will move up the list. Mm. But the fact remains that Tyler has told us he is not yet ready mm. to move out of his apartment in our home. To be perfectly mm. clear, I'm not ready for that either. Mm. I question if and when either of us will really be ready. Now I know there's a list I need to get on. <laughs> you never know how much you don't know. <laughs> when Tyler turned 18, I filed as legal guardian for Tyler. Um, we are now considering reversing that determination. It was originally set up so that he would remain in school and I could control his marital status. <laughs> Tyler no longer needs me to have legal say to his decisions. Um, as Tyler's mother, I'm sure you can imagine, I am at the ready to give my advice and help Tyler navigate through his life choices. We set up a special needs trust for Tyler. We found that was a safe way to save, um, financially prepare Tyler for the future. We were counseled that life expectancy for Tyler is 30 plus years after we're gone. And that just really scares me. We're fortunate that Tyler has a sister um, who has a family that has embraced him and will guide him when Dale and I are gone. We have a long road ahead of us, and much is left to prepare Tyler for a meaningful future. 
We will build on our strategies as we learn, as we grow, and as Tyler needs. Thank you.